Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk about some reasons why you should use Windows versus Linux, and vice versa why you should use Linux against Windows. Um, so these are two operating systems that both exist out there on the market. Windows, of course, uh, naturally has a dominant um, factor over the marketplace where I think most people do run Windows and have for a very long time. And then there's also Mac out there, but uh, we're not going to comment on Mac too much today. So between Windows and Linux, uh, we're going to point out some things that are different between them and why you might want to use one over the other. So for Windows, um, one of the really big advantages of Windows over other operating systems that exist out there is that Windows is very easy to use. So it has a tool called Command Prompt, which is where you open up a black screen and you're able to type in commands. Uh, on Linux, this would be called the Terminal. And these commands, usually you don't really have to dive into it too much because developers these days have made all of these graphical interface tools on both operating systems to make it easy for the average person to do stuff on the computer. But uh, by far, Windows to date still has a much easier time getting things done without using the command prompt. So you can use Windows and almost never need to go manually type in commands because there's always going to be a graphical user interface uh, to help you out. Um, and by a graphical user interface, I just mean you pop open a window and it will have some buttons for settings rather than you having to type in long manual commands. So definitely a plus for Windows and definitely one of the things that makes it so popular. Uh, Windows also, uh, from my experience, tends to have the most compatibility out of the box with your software. So if getting things to work is something you don't really want to play around with too much, you want things to just uh, automatically go ahead and install themselves, especially with Windows 10, they've been getting better about doing things like automatically installing your uh, graphics drivers. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card or something like that, um, <clears throat> Windows can basically go ahead and take care of it. And there's not a whole lot you need to set up. Um, even with the uh, Windows Firewall, Windows Defender, I think they're calling it, um, it's pretty decent and you don't necessarily have to go out and grab a third-party antivirus, though you might want to do that anyway. Um, so yeah, just having things work out of the box, it's a big plus. You can get up and running with Windows in a couple hours, uh, especially if you go to ninite.com and use the tools there to uh, download all of the free apps that you would use. Uh, all in one package without having to go through too many um, installation steps. Just kind of, you launch the Ninite tool and it installs all these different apps for you. It's really awesome. I've done a couple of videos on it. Um, then yeah, it's, it's just really easy to get everything set up. Um, and here's another big one, especially for tech or geeky tech people or just uh, geeks in general, I guess I would say, uh, gaming. Uh, on Windows, you have far better options, and that's simply because most companies that do build PC games, they target Windows first. Linux systems are kind of an afterthought because Linux has a smaller market share when it comes to gaming. So uh, on Linux, you can get uh, Windows games to work, like uh, Hearthstone, for instance, using a tool called Wine, which is the Windows... Uh, it's Wine stands for not a Windows emulator or something like that, but um, in a sense that is what it does. It allows you to run Windows games on, li uh, on Linux or uh, other tools like Photoshop. I think I saw in Play on Linux that some people wrote up scripts for installing Photoshop. Um, but anyway, the thing about that is though, that A, usually you'll get much worse performance even if you can get it to work. And secondly, it's usually a pain in the butt to do. You have to play around with a lot of settings menus, and uh, sometimes it just doesn't work at all. So if you like gaming, if you want to play all of the cool games that are out there on the market today, um, League of Legends, Blizzard games, stuff like that, then you probably want Windows. If, if you're not using Windows as your sole operating system, then you might want a dual boot between Windows and Linux and just have both installed on your computer, um, which is kind of a cool techy thing to do. I like to do that a lot. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, uh, usually you want to have Windows around to play all the games. Um, another reason to use Windows would be if you really can't live without all of the Windows-specific software. So this would be stuff like the Microsoft Office Suite or Adobe Photoshop. 
um, tools that, although it might be possible to get running on Linux, and there are definitely alternatives on Linux, namely LibreOffice, which I think comes out of the box with almost every Linux package these days. Um, those tools exist on Windows, and they're going to have maximum compatibility on, running fresh on Windows. Um, now, there are uh, alternatives, like you can use Mac OS, uh, which is kind of... Uh, I think the deal is that they're both based on Unix. So Linux and Mac are both ba both based on Linux. Eh, Unix, sorry, U-N-I-X. Um, but at the end of the day, they are separate operating systems. Uh, the Kind of the main difference is that a lot of stuff on Mac is kind of proprietary and not open source. So what the Mac people are doing at Apple, um, it's all kind of their internal stuff and... Uh, yeah, but uh, they do end up having compatibility for software that Linux doesn't have, such as Microsoft Word or Adobe Photoshop. Um, so Mac is often popular with uh, kind of web designer types who may not want to use Windows, but still want to be able to use Adobe Photoshop. I can't comment too much more on that because I'm not really much of a Mac guy, but let's move on from there. Um, if you're a novice at computers, uh, Windows is obviously going to be a really good choice for you. A little bit redundant with some of the earlier points, but uh, Windows is the easiest to use, plain and simple. If you try to use Linux as your first operating system, which is very unlikely because you're watching this video, and I'm probably going to assume on a computer of some sort, um, then um, yeah, using, using Linux fresh out of the box is going to cause you some frustration. Um, they have made it a lot easier, like there's graphical user interfaces for installing Linux uh, for most of the distros that are out there. Distro meaning distribution, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, there'll be some little things that do frustrate you a bit. Like when you want to get a certain application to work, needing to put in commands to uh, get the settings right, that can be a real pain, especially if you don't really know how to use the terminal that well, uh, it can frustrate you. Okay, so that's reasons to use Windows over Linux. Uh, let's talk about Linux now, some of the advantages of Linux. So Linux um, has actually many different versions. It's kind of like, uh, you, you could say like the free market operating system in a sense, because although Linux may have started a, a, as one individual operating system, it's kind of branched into, I don't know, I want to say like even hundreds of different variants. So you have like Ubuntu, you have, uh, let's see, Kali Linux, which is kind of security based. You have Lint, uh, uh, sorry, Mint, Linux Mint, which is based on either Ubuntu or Debian. And Ubuntu is based on Debian, so there's Debian uh, as well. Um, ignore the whole chain of what's based on what. Um, it's not really that relevant right now. There's Manjaro Linux, one of my favorites, which is based on Arch. And then Arch is, of course, its own thing. Uh, those two are rolling distributions, so they kind of auto-update everything, even the core system files. Uh, what else is out there? Lesser known ones like Elementary Linux. Um, Fedora, that's a pretty cool one. Uh, yeah, there's just so many different flavors of Linux. I uh, mean, not only are there different versions of Linux, but there's also different versions of the desktop environment. So on Windows, everybody's used to the bar at the bottom of the screen. It has a start menu. You can get that on Linux. There's uh, several of these desktop environments, which have icon sets and, you know, start menus, taskbar, uh, that kind of stuff that's very similar to Windows. But there's also other alternatives, uh, such as Openbox, which is where you tend to kind of right click to open up a drop down menu to open just about everything and you don't have uh, taskbars or that kind of thing. It's less popular, but it's an uh, option that's out there. Um, and then you just have very different looking UIs as you go play around with these different desktop environments. So you can install like Ubuntu with the Unity desktop environment, which I think is specific to Ubuntu, or you can install GNOME. Um, I, I would guess that for Ubuntu, there's also like KDE or XFCE desktop environments. Um, it just gives you a lot of different options, and that means you can really customize your UI. So if having control over how pretty much every little thing looks uh, on your computer is something that appeals to you, Linux can be pretty good for that because um, there's so many different tools for customizing how things look. 
Uh, it's also a free OS, and this is probably kind of a big one if uh, you like doing things the legal route. Um, I don't know exactly how much Windows goes for right now. Uh, I think it's something like 150 bucks or something for the home or professional for Windows 10. Um, but in any case, if you want to use Windows and you didn't get it as like a student discount or as part of your school package, um, then you may have to shell out some money for it. And, and admittedly, Windows does come with a lot of computers you buy. So um, if you bought a computer, there's a good chance it already had Windows 8 or Windows 10 on it anyway. But at some point, you may have to upgrade that. And uh, I'm not sure whether or not they're giving away free upgrades. I think it really depends. Um, in any case, Windows isn't free. Uh, Linux is, though uh, many of these different organizations that are making the Linux operating systems uh, function and stay up to date, uh, they are relying on donations. So it's kind of donation where it's like, yeah, people need to eat. They can't just spend all their time, you know, making f really cool operating systems for free. Uh, or maybe they can't, but it's on their side time. Uh, okay, so uh, with web servers, uh, this would be kind of when you're setting up uh, Apache, um, an Apache web server that might run PHP using MySQL database. Um, a lot of people like to use Linux as their web server of choice for that. Um, I'm not actually entirely sure why that is. Uh, I'm guessing it might have to do with performance reasons, but I've never actually benchmarked it. Uh, you can, of course, run an Apache web server on Windows as well, um, but it's really popular to do it on Linux. So uh, that may be something to consider there. So because there are so many different distributions on Linux, a lot of people have put together certain packages, uh, such as Kali Linux, where they're not so much for general use computing, but rather for general tech needs. So Kali Linux being for security testing, there's also uh, Tails Linux, which is to kind of optimize your personal security. So I think it comes with the Tor browser. Um, for as much uh, anonymous browsing of the internet and uh, general computing use as you could get. Um, so if you have very specific uh, kind of tech-based needs, uh, then Linux becomes a good option because there's so many different distros that there's probably one out there that's specifically designed for exactly what you're looking for. Uh, also, in general, I found that I get faster performance on Linux. Uh, Linux tends to have less demanding PC spec requirements. Uh, the exception to that might be with gaming because uh, it just kind of seems uh, games maybe not as optimized on, on Linux as they would be for the Windows counterparts. Or it could just be my drivers kind of suck uh, on the Linux version. I run NVIDIA, by the way. I think I have uh, Sly NVIDIA 750Ms on my computer. It's kind of an older card, but... Uh, I definitely do notice that games tend to run a lot slower on Linux. Um, well, it, it varies somewhat, but yeah, in general. And then that really goes much heavier for um, when you try to emulate something with Wine. And I, I know, I know, Wine is supposed to mean like, Wine is not an emulator. Uh, but, yeah, but for everything else, like opening up web browsers, doing general tasks on your computer, Linux tends to run very fast, and uh, you don't get any of that clutter slowdown that you tend to get on Windows. Um, so you can run you can run Linux with low PC specs, and if you have great PC specs, it's going to run blistering fast, and that's great. So uh, kind of to go back between both of them, um, this is a general uh, kind of case. If you happen to be uh, at work and you have heavy use of the computers, if you work in a tech job or something like that, then whatever your work office tends to be using um, is probably going to be the system that you want to run with uh, in terms of Windows or Linux. So this really applies, especially if um, you're doing anything like in the tech field, like for instance, programming, because if you run into an issue while you're programming and someone else runs into an issue while they're programming. Um, and you're trying to like kind of figure out how to fix it on both systems. But a lot of that requires you to use the terminal commands in order to make those actually work. Um, then you may run into some confusion there. Uh, it may kind of decrease 
uh, the performance at which uh, you can troubleshoot those problems. Uh, because the systems do have slightly different ways in how they do things. Um, and if, you, if you're trying to say, oh, do this, but you're talking about Windows, when they're on Linux, it, you know, it might not work out the same way. Um, and, uh, you know, similar things like that. It's just easier if everybody's on the same operating system so everybody knows exactly what's going on as much as possible. Uh, so those are a bunch of reasons to use Winic Windows or Linux. Uh, they're definitely both cooperating systems. I like to use both uh, a lot of the time. Um, in general, I, I would say, though, for most people, probably Windows. But if you do want to try Linux, I would say try dual booting it alongside Windows, um, at least at first. Make sure that you still have Windows installed so that you can go back to it. Um, but then you can have, you know, a, a separate partition to install Linux on, and maybe you do some of your web browsing on that because it's fast or it's cool or you just like it. Um, anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this video. So I've been Chris. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.